there's some area in your life where uh, you are recently feeling as if you are burnt <laughs> burnt or you are feeling that there's a lot which i have done already in this area but uh, it seems that it's still not enough and you are figuring out did i do the right thing or did i do something wrong did i go did i take the wrong path or was it a detour or <laughs> or was it the right course of action and if it was then to what extent was it the right course or do i need to go back and sit and do the things again all over or do i need to restart something which i had done once upon a time but i also left it once upon a time or should i do something else <laughs> there's a lot of confusion in some area of your life well that is happening because sun and saturn are going to be conjunct and saturn is going to be conjunct uh, combust because any planet which is in close proximity of the sun is considered to be combust generally in 8 to 10 degrees or it is sometimes also referred as astha and if it is around 8 degrees 9 degrees then they say it's in deep tamsha but the point is uh, what should we be doing in such a situation so that's what we are going to discuss today all right so welcome back to exotic astrology and if you are new then please uh, like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation go to my link below you will find the website in the description and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so now <coughs> there are three things that we need to see here the first thing is three or two let's see how many things <laughs> the first thing uh, that we need to see is a conjunction of uh, sun and saturn so whenever sun and saturn gets conjunct in transit see what happens is in any sign this is irrespective of the sign or house sun represents our purpose what we want to do in life do not as a career but what we identify with sun is ego right ego is identification not in a negative sense but and what saturn is saturn is reality now we may have these big ideals we may have all these big thoughts big things which we want to do <laughs> but saturn is that which is in the ground zameen mein kya hai that is what is saturn so whenever sun and saturn gets conjunct people say that that's terrible that's very difficult why do they say that actually it's not difficult what happens is our ego gets connected with the reality so suppose you had a youtube channel which was going very fast and you thought that maybe in a year it will reach a million subscribers yes it happens to me sometimes sometimes uh, exotic astrology grows so fast <laughs> uh that i feel that maybe in a year it will reach 10 million subscribers <laughs> but then sometimes from some few days it's growing so slow that i feel that it will go down one day <laughs> now i'm not saying that's happening because of sun and saturn's conjunction i'm not saying that but this is just an example to show that there is a purpose which we have we have our ideals we have our hopes wishes desires dreams goals aspirations we have our power sun shows the power which we have sun shows the best that we can do in this world because it's light wherever sun is sitting there will be light light means you will always go there <laughs> wherever there is confusion you will always look to that house what now what happens is when sun and saturn comes close and what is happening is saturn doesn't come close to sun yes because sun will always be uh, faster in the speed so what happens is actually sun is coming closer to saturn so our ideals our goals our hopes wishes desires who we are and what we want to do in life that is coming in contact with reality so that is a frust uh, frustrating experience sometimes because most of the times 
what we are and what we want to be is not what reality is we may have the desire to have a big home we may not have that we may have a desire to have a great marriage it may not happen it may happen or it may not happen or we may have this aspiration that we want a million dollars but we may get some dollars <laughs> so that's how this material world is arranged as lord krishna says in the gita dukhalaya mashashvatam napnuvanti mahatmana samsiddhim paramam gata that's what lord krishna says that my dear arjuna this material world is a place of dukhalaya dukhalaya means like we have himalaya him means snow ice him alaya means it's a place so pustakalaya that means a library almost <laughs> himalaya means a place full of snow that's what the himalayan mountains are so dukhalaya means a place which is full of misery Wh- what are the miseries birth old age disease and death janma mrityu jara vyadi dukha dosha anu darshanam and if you see in astrology the power of the uh, planets which are on the side of malefics are much 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 more higher than benefics for example sun is a malefic mild malefic but it's still a malefic may not be that bad then saturn is a malefic then rahu is a malefic then ketu is a malefic and then mars is a malefic so you have five malefics and the other day i was uh, having a conversation with james braha so he was telling that uranus neptune pluto are also malefics all right and they are the worst of the dreaded malefics that you can have malefics in a way that they will give you challenges and struggles and troubles and delays setbacks disappointments all these things millions and billions and trillions of times more than what saturn mars rahu ketu sun can give you so 6 7 8 my god there are eight malefics and what about the benefics jupiter venus and moon moon and mercury are conditional benefics yes conditional means if they are with benefics or under benefic influence then uh, they behave like benefics but if they are not then mm, <laughs> not very much so jupiter and venus are the only so called remaining benefics they are unconditional benefics unconditional means irrespective of the sign or their associations they behave in a benefic way so now you see that there are eight malefics if you consider uranus neptune pluto and then you have two conditional malefics or benefics so you keep them out and then you only have two benefics so my god 8 is to 2 it's like 1 is to 4 <laughs> so that means in a day if you divide your time if you take it as a uh, 1 by 4 or you make it 1 by 5 yes so it's like saying only 20% of the time in a day is prosperous is happy the remaining 80% is miserable and that's what happens you get up in the morning and something will go good something will go right but then there are 10 other things which goes wrong either you you are not getting your payment or there's a fight with your boss or with the spouse or some problem or the other is always there so that that's what happens and that's what astrology ultimately tells us so when sun and saturn gets conjunct we kind of realize this reality the reality is always there but we do not realize it when sun and saturn comes together that is the only time we realize that there are too many challenges there are too many hurdles delays disappointments and setbacks in this world but then lord krishna also says napnu anti mahatmana samsiddhim paramam gata that one who takes shelter of me will cross over this material world very easily because krishna also says daivihesha gunamai mama maya durattaya mame vamya prapadyante mayam yetam tarantite daivihesha gunamai that this material world this material nature gunas daivihesha gunamai mama maya mama means my <laughs> my maya krishna is telling this is this 
Maya Nagari, which is, is there, is my Maya. I have created this. Duratyaya, it's very difficult to overcome. Mame Vame Prapadyante Mayam Etam Tarantite. One who takes shelter of me will cross over it. And before that, Krishna also says, Tribir Guna Mair Bhavair. That these three modes of material nature, they are very strong. Sattva, Raja and Tama, mode of goodness, passion and ignorance. So, for those people who are not spiritual, spiritual means they are not in contact with spirit, which means they are not having spiritual practices in their uh, life. Their life is just only, you know, seeing TV, earning money, having sex, going out and dating, or going out and having parties, just going out and having fun. <laughs> so for these people who do not have any spiritual practices in their life, when Sun and Saturn comes together in transit, life becomes hellish for them for that one month. Because they can see all the negativities which are already existing in their life. It doesn't come. There is no negativity when Sun and Saturn comes together. The negativity doesn't come. It reveals itself. Because wherever Sun transits, it shows light there. So when Sun is traveling over Saturn, it's like Sun is throwing light upon Saturn. And Saturn is what? The difficulties. So suddenly you are 10 times more conscious. And you are cautious also. Now that, oh my God, there are so many difficulties, you know. I have to do this, I have to do that. So, now is a time when, suppose if you are ignoring things, it's a good time that you have to now start doing things. Now, the question is, which are the things that you have to start doing? Well, it's very simple. Just see which house Saturn is ruling in your chart, depending on your ascendant. So, regarding those houses, you will get a feeling. And whenever sun will cross some planet in transit, then it will always be combust, that planet. So when sun is nearing Saturn, which means it is coming from Scorpio to Sagittarius, then we will start feeling the heat. It's like saying the difficulties are there and the heat is coming. So we will start feeling that the difficulties are affecting us more and more. Not that it is appearing now. I, again, I am saying it's not appearing now. You will be able to see it now. So then you will feel that, oh my God, this is affecting me too much. Because you go near fire, you will feel as if, oh my God, I am getting burned. <laughs> That's what happens. So now is the time that we can actually work on our weaknesses. Because now is the time we will be able to clearly see what our limitations are because Saturn shows limitations. So now Sun is coming and throwing light that see these these are the things which you thought you will do but all your plans have failed <laughs> or some of the plans which you made have failed and some of them have worked depending on your dashas and original uh, horoscope planets in Sagittarius of course. Okay so that's the first thing we need to understand what happens when sun and saturn gets conjunct our ego is smashed smashed in a way not that we are insulted but we actually realize where we should be and where we should not be so there are some important decisions which we might have to make when sun and saturn are conjunct till january 15th regarding the houses which saturn is ruling in the chart and the biggest, uh, the second thing is uh, the combustion of Saturn. Saturn will be combust. Okay, and the peak combustion is I think around 1st or 2nd January that time. New Year's. So during that time what will happen is Saturn will be f totally combust and then Sun will leave Saturn. So till January 2nd or 3rd, the issues will keep piling. It's like stockpile it will keep piling it will keep piling 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 and you will feel very irritated you will feel as if oh my god this is overwhelming for me <laughs> and you will do 10 things to run away and to escape and to beat around the bush as in ask me is this and a sale barakubua which means you will try to escape from it it can happen because 
Sun is Agni. Sometimes we cannot face the fire. The reality of our limitations we might not be able to face. So instead of running away, we should face our realities. We should face what we can and what we cannot do. And when Saturn is out of combustion, after January 2nd, the process will start because then Sun will start leaving Saturn. And finally, after 15 January, Sat, uh, Sun will leave Sagittarius and it will go to Capricorn, where it will be conjunct Ketu. Now, that's a separate story altogether. <coughs> so, that's the second point. So, when combustion is there, till the time the planet is fully combust, the issues will start growing, growing. And then, during the time the combustion is at the peak, which is around January 1st or 2nd, you will actually, it's like saying, you have realized your weaknesses in totality. So now you are like, that's it. These are my strengths. These are my weaknesses. All right. So after January 2nd, you will start feeling that, okay, it's all right. I have these weaknesses. Now I will work on it. So the best thing that I can tell you is, don't panic. There's nothing to panic. There's not going to be any big change in your life. Don't worry. There, there's so many videos in YouTube where these things are being spread unnecessarily. There is something which is already there <coughs> in your life which you will see now. So when you see, you will realize, oh, okay, this was already there in my life. There's nothing new about it. And when combustion is happening, what happens is... <coughs> There is a purification which is going on. It's like saying <coughs> when you uh, want to purify something, <coughs> gold especially, then you put it in fire. Then the gold will shine more and more and more. <coughs> and when the gold is put further into fire, it will keep shining, 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 shining. So sometimes you need to shine your Saturn also because if you do not shine your Saturn, then you will not see the weaknesses. And if you do not see the weaknesses, you cannot improve your Saturn. You cannot work on the areas which Saturn wants you to work. So I would say this is a very good time to realize who you are and where your limits are. And the third thing is this conjunction is happening in the sign of Sagittarius Dhanu Rashi, which is the original ninth house and the combustion will be in Purvashada Nakshatra as we know because Saturn is in Purvashada so when Sun crosses Purvashada which it will enter I think on 28th or 29th December that time this will start at its highest intensity the the peak the pinnacle will start that time all right so enjoy the new year but keep an eye on this because as the new year starts you will have a big realization okay and they are also enemies in astrology which means that this can be tough sometimes all right but there's nothing to panic i mean this your life's not going to collapse or you are not going to die nothing like that is going to happen as i said i am repeating that which is already there in your life you will be able to see it now there is no new problem which is coming unless your antar dasha or your mahadasha is changing during december all right if that is happening then maybe you can uh, blame the dasha but you cannot blame this transit all right so when in dhanurashi this is happening dhanurashi sagittarius primarily deals with our hopes beliefs wishes and aspirations wishes not in a materialistic sense but see dhanurash jupiter is the ruler of sagittarius so sagittarius is what basically sagittarius is that voice inside you which tells you be a good person don't do bad bad things don't do wrong things do do good things be be be, be nice be good be great <laughs> So our greatness can be tested during this time. It can have happen that you have been presented with some temptation, with some allurement and now you have been thinking that you are a great personality because you can always evade temptations and now suddenly boom, bang, there's some temptation which comes out 
and then you are like <coughs> should i indulge in this or should i not so if you indulge if you fall prey then that means you are you are good maybe but not that great <laughs> but if you can say no to the temptations because the opposite sign of sagittarius which is gemini gemini is originally the third house which is the house of prostitution which is the house of allurement basically so sagittarius is that sign which says i will fight gemini because it's opposite fight doesn't mean it doesn't like gemini or it hates gemini i'm not saying that but all those tendencies which are there inside us which says because gemini is what basically falling prey to allurements right so sagittarius is the sign of religion spirituality god it's the sign of the guru the guru is the only one who can protect you from gemini because remember rahu gets exalted in gemini should i repeat rahu gets exalted there no power in the entire universe can save you from gemini is the eighth from the eighth house eighth house is scorpio and then if you go there it's gemini it's gemini is like the higher octave of scorpio that which a scorpio leaves a gemini starts from there so now when sun is transiting in sagittarius <coughs> it's a great time to reconnect with our guru it's a great time to travel to holy places it's a great time to do spiritual practices it's a great time to read scriptures like the ramayana the mahabharat especially the ramayana because sun is lord ram surya narayan <laughs> and we can also uh, visit holy places we can visit ayodhya we can visit kanchipuram we can visit banaras we can visit all these places and when we go there we just don't click photos and then say oh bye bye great we will also sit there and we will discuss with the sages of what's the speciality of this place then we will understand things much better and yes if you have your gurus your guides your counselors your facilitators whoever is connecting you to some spiritual organization catch their hold hold them <laughs> catch their feet and say that please don't leave me now <laughs> and this is irrespective of the fact that <coughs> sun and saturn are conjunct so now what will happen is <coughs> saturn is already there so sun will also come there so sun will come and show you that oh look 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 you thought this is your territory these are your principles and now saturn will be like wait let me test you <laughs> so maybe you succeed or maybe you don't succeed that will depend on what your consciousness is and what is going on in your dasha okay so there you go that is what i will say three factors regarding sun and saturn's conjunction all right <coughs> so if you are new then like share comment and subscribe and if you want a consultation go down to my link okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and hopefully you find him <laughs> before january 15 okay until next time bye bye see you